You know what? There are a lot of really little telltale signs to indicate a person has been on or working with a system. In this nugget, I'd like to chat with you for a few minutes about some of the tools and options that might be used by an attacker to help cover those tracks. We'll also do a demonstration of one of the tools that's built into Windows 2012 Server that an attacker who's compromised that system may also take advantage of. Once the attacker has gained admin control on a system, they're going to want to try to cover their tracks to avoid detection. For example, one of the first things they might do on a system is to turn off or disable certain aspects of auditing because they do not want their actions traced in some type of an audit file somewhere. At the same time, if they disable auditing and they leave it disabled, it's also very likely that somebody may notice that, hey, auditing is totally disabled on the system. So it could be like an inverse Mr. Miyagi from Karate Kid. Wax off when we first go in, auditing off. And then when we're done, we can go ahead and turn auditing back on. So in the Karate Kid, that was Mr. Miyagi's big training material, was wax on, wax off. And the attacker would do the inverse of that, turning off auditing when he goes in and turning it back on when he leaves. And the tools that the attacker is going to use may depend on the type of system that he's attacking. For example, with Windows 2012, if I can spell correctly, there's a tool called auditpol.exe that can be used to view the current settings for auditing and also to change the settings. If we're on a Linux system, we might go in and delete log files or delete history files. And on Linux, we could use the command rm for remove, and we could add switches for force and recursive to delete certain files. If there's some type of a history file, for example, with the bash shell on Linux, we could go ahead and delete that history file in an attempt to cover the tracks of what we've done. And there's lots of other utilities that we can use, again, depending on the operating system. One of the tools I've seen is called clearlogs.exe on a Windows system. And as part of the Metasploit framework, there's also the meterpreter that we could use that could go in and clear log files from a system. Or if we wanted to manually clear the event viewer logs on Windows, we could go to Control Panel. And then from there, under System and Security and under Administrative Tools, we could go to Event Viewer and simply delete the entries there. And the exact location is going to vary a little bit between versions of Windows. But the concept is the same. Go find the logs, remove them in an attempt to cover our tracks. On some Linux systems, we could go to var, and then under var, go to the log folder. And with the text editor, we can go into messages and simply delete the contents of that messages file. Again, in an attempt to hide the activity that we've been doing on the system. And one of the tricky things is there's lots of little teeny nooks and crannies, especially on Windows, that can indicate there was activity that took place. For example, there's the MRU, a most recently used feature. And then most recently used could show up in many different places. Browsers may have a history of where you've been. The operating system itself, when you go to start, that could indicate where you've recently been. There's also the Windows registry that might have telltale signs to indicate where the attacker has been. So it's very likely the attacker, if possible, is going to use some type of an automated tool that can go through the registry and clean up a lot of that detail. One of the interesting things about tools is that they can be used innocently by a user and also maliciously by an attacker based on their intent. One of the automated tools is called C-C-L-E-A-N-E-R. And what this app is designed to do is to optimize and clean up a system. It can go in and get rid of temporary files, log files, memory dumps, and also scrub your online history of where you've been, which would save a lot of time for the attacker because he doesn't have to manually go through and clean all those things up. Regarding the most recently used, there's a utility called MRU Blaster. It sounds like a Buzz Lightyear tool. And the MRU Blaster has the option of looking at over a dozen different MRUs that are kept in things like browsers, Microsoft Office, RegEdit, Windows Explorer recent folders, Microsoft Office recent items, and many more. Now, one of the tools that's included as part of Windows Server is a tool called AuditPol, which is spelled A-U-D-I-T-P-O-L. And the extension is an executable.exe. So we'll type in AuditPol, press enter, and that's going to give us the syntax for how to use Audit Paul with the appropriate switches. So one of the options for Audit Paul is I'm going to hit the up arrow key to bring up Audit Paul again and put a space. And let's use a slash get space and then a slash category colon and a wildcard and asterisk. And what that'll do is it'll show us all the current settings for the audit policy on this system. So we'll press enter and let's scroll up to near the top of the list here. Here we have log on, log off. And currently we're logging the success and failures of login attempts. 
we're also logging the successful log offs. So if the attacker has compromised this system, one of the first things they may want to do is specifically disable certain auditing events on the system. And then when they're done, very likely you want to restore that back so that if somebody's looking at the audit policy, they won't say, hey, how did this get turned off? We should also be aware that when we do make a change to our audit policy, the system logs are also gonna keep track that we turned off that feature. So the attacker might wanna turn off an auditing feature and also go remove the event log that indicates that that feature was turned off. So as an example of how we could use audit pol to change the policy, let's type in A-U-D-I-T-P-O-L space, and we could use a slash clear, or we could do a slash remove, or we could specifically modify a specific element of our audit policy. But I'm gonna do an audit pol slash clear, press enter, it's saying, are you sure? I'm gonna say Y for yes, press enter. And that is effectively turned off the audit policy on the system. If we hit the up arrow key a few times and we do an audit pol slash get slash category colon asterisk and press enter, you'll notice now as we look at the list that every one of our auditing items is now disabled. And I use the clear option. Now, if we wanted to modify a specific audit policy element, we could use the set command. And clear is a little bit aggressive because if we wanted to go back in after we were done with the attack and restore the settings that were there previously, unless we had somehow backed them up or had some other type of restore option in mind, we'd have to go back in and set them up manually, every single one. And again, the goal is for the attacker to be undetected. That's the goal of covering our tracks and turning off and manipulating logging. That is to not let the administrators of the system realize that you've been on their system. I'm glad you joined me for this nugget where we've discussed and did a demonstration of some tools that can be used by the attacker to cover their tracks. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.